this is David for Big Bits, and in this video, we finally have a raise in trading view. It has been a long time coming. This is a feature uh, where more experienced programmers, or even those who are, you know, just in the introductory levels, have been looking for this feature for some time. Arrays essentially just allow you to hold an array of different values assorted together. So essentially what we're talking about here is like a bundle of values that we want to keep together. So uh, in the past what we've done is we had stored values in variables. Now uh, think of a variable as a single unit. Uh, you can think of an array as an array of those single units. So you can have th one, two, three, four. You can have as many well, within the limits of the system, you can have a lot of different values within an array that you can manage and you can use. And there's some really cool features about arrays for those of you who uh, aren't too familiar with something like link with C-sharp to where you can actually use math functions on your arrays that you're working with. There's some really cool stuff in here that you're gonna be interested in. But the first thing we have here this is the blog article that they've came out with. They've been working on this feature for a long time and they did a really good job on a first implementation here. There's a lot of features built in with it for this first release of arrays and I'm sure they're going to build on more stuff like they do a lot of other things, but for this to be their start, it's really good. All right. So again, this is the blog post for it. You can see they've added this feature and let's see, did I miss something here? Calculate. Okay, so you can use float, int, bool, or color in your arrays. So uh, color, that's pretty interesting. So these are just different data types that you can use within the arrays. Um, a float, you can think of this more of like a decimal value. And if you remember from math, integers are a whole number. And that is important to keep in mind. Boolean, that's true or false. And then color is... Uh, they have their own namespace for that. And if you're not familiar with what a namespace is, essentially when you're doing your code and you type in color dot white, the color dot is the namespace essentially. And anything you put after that is just a different property that has a different color value. So the color keyword is just the namespace. All right, I don't wanna to get too in depth on that, but the next line that you see here is used to create an array called levels and it initializes the array creates the array in memory with the initial value of na so when you are plotting things on the chart and if you've been following the tutorial series you'll know that if you plot na it doesn't plot anything it's a null value essentially there is nothing there not even a zero uh, you can literally think of you know if you're looking on this day, what happened, uh, you know, two years ago, that was really important. If there was nothing, then there was nothing, um, absolutely nothing, okay? But that could be represented as a zero because nothing happened there. And what really null is, is trying to reference a day that doesn't even exist. So, um, so today is September 11th when I'm recording the video. So, Say, for example, we wanted to reference August 34th. That is null. It would give you an NA value back. So that's just one way to think of that. And again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep myself from going too in-depth on what we're talking about here, but I want to make sure everybody understands what these mean because uh, this video probably not going to be early on in the tutorial series, and a lot of people are going to find this before they get to the tutorial series where you're, you'll probably see a lot of this stuff in action. All right, so they have some really special functions that I talked about specifically with math. Um, you do some transformations on your arrays, copying, sorting, slicing, and then the special math functions. These are super valuable. So you can get and store within your array a bunch of numbers, and you can call the array.min function like this, and it'll give you the minimum number out of it. Same goes for .max, that's the maximum function. And you can actually call standard deviation, average, and median as well. And there's a lot more to it, and you can actually go to their documentation to find out a lot more on here about this. And there is some error handling that we're going to take a look at in just a moment. But you can see there is a pretty good 
set of documentation here for the arrays themselves. And I'll try and post a link to this in the description of the video. And if I don't, just remind me and I'll go back and I'll try and do it. All right. So this bit of code essentially shows us how we are going to be using arrays or how you can use arrays. I'll kind of walk through this code just a little bit and then we'll actually uh, look at it down here to see what it does. So the first thing you're doing is creating inputs, one for levels and one for the source. We're going to be using 20 levels. Let me zoom in here. There's going to be 20 levels in this example and there's going to be a source using the HLC3 high low close divided by three then you initialize your array with the number of levels okay so you're going to create an array with 20 items in it so that is the size the size of the array is 20 for the 20 different levels that means we're holding 20 different float values within our array now this checks to see if the volume is rising and then if it is we remove the oldest level from the beginning of the array and to do that you shift on the array this is a function called shift and you call that on the array and then you do that with the number of levels and it'll take care of it there for you all right and excuse me that's not the number of levels that is actually the array itself levels here okay uh, I was looking at the wrong thing when you call this function array.shift you pass in the array levels and it will shift that and remove the oldest value and at that point the size of your array I believe may change depending on how they've implemented the array uh, I believe it should change uh, when you do a shift typically it will remove an item and when you do a push it'll add a new item okay and you're doing that here as well and when you add using the push function using this levels array that we're storing all of our data in you're adding in the source for the current candle and that is the HLC 3 and you'll notice that it's the current candle because it doesn't have the uh, index at the end of it there then at the end of that you're going to calculate the average of the levels in the array excluding any of the NA values so all you have to do you create a new variable here just called level so this is the level that it's going to be using to plot on the chart you call the average function with arrays you pass in your array for the levels it's going to take all the numbers in there it's going to create the average level for you pretty simple uh, all of the hard math as far as doing an average is done for you and you don't have to keep track of a bunch of different variables so <laughs> it's pretty handy as opposed to what we were having to deal with before having to hard code a lot of things they're a lot more flexible uh, to work with and really just something that's been lacking out of pine that now that it exists is going to take pine to another level and really you're going to see some really really interesting scripts now that you can have arrays and this uh, sort of flexibility in the code as well all right then all of it does is just plot that level that it just calculated using the array average and you can actually see that here it has a condition here to see whether the price is above or below that if the price is above that calculated level that line zoom in here that line is green and if it's below then it's that fuchsia color so that about does it for the uh, basically the blog post here I'm not going to dig into actually doing code in this video uh, I really just wanted to make sure you're aware that arrays now exist we'll probably do a video specifically on using arrays at a later point but for now we're just going to cover that these are in here some of the basics on what arrays are and some of the basic functions showing you the example that trading view provided you and then you also have of course the manual page for the user manual on pine I'm gonna to try to link that in the description of the video and then you should also check out some of the script examples that they're showing you below uh, I mean you can look at this script to see kind of what's going on something kind of different I haven't seen something like this myself but pretty interesting that you can create something like this on the chart and they're doing these with arrays I assume because they are added in here as examples yeah 
So uh, Ricardo Santos and uh, I'm just going to call him Duck. I'm not sure how you would pronounce that, but Duck. Uh, Ricardo Santos and Ducks did a lot of testing on the arrays. And, and let me tell you guys, there was a lot of testing. There's a lot of work on the arrays uh, uh, following the pine coders and all of their communication. They're, they've done a lot of work. The team's done a lot of work to get arrays. So uh, I'm sure they appreciated very, very much the testing from the people who actually worked on this. But yeah, that's it, guys. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video. Please make sure to like the video if you actually did like the video. And if you did like the video, you probably want to subscribe to the channel. I do a lot of videos like this. And I've mentioned throughout the video, we do a PineScript tutorial series where we talk about how to actually create your own scripts for your own indicators and strategies throughout from the very beginning uh, for a very novice programmer who knows nothing about programming all the way into making some fairly complex code but that's going to do it for the video guys thanks have a great day